This episode is brought to you by your sister's Thotty Pictures. Your sister Stoddy's pictures have been keeping the homies thirsty since the creation of the Mona Lisa in 1503. Your sister Stoddy pictures is the number one cause of throwdowns between mothers and daughters within the household. Your sister Stoddy pictures are the leading contributor to increased match rates on all online dating applications. No matter how fine or how ugly your sister Stoddy pictures are, they can always lead to a successful pregnancy. So if you'd like to have them removed from your household, just call 1-800-TELL-DAD and speak to one of our 2,000 disappointed fathers that have been through the same experience. One more time, that number is 1-800-TELL-DAD. Now let's start the episode. Our sins and woes Our sins and woes Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode six of the Our Sins and Wolves podcast, the podcast where a bunch of dumbass millennials talk about their dumbass perspectives, their dumbass opinions, their dumbass mistakes, and their dumbass complaints. I'm your host, Nelson, and thank you for joining me today. Now, let's give a couple shout outs real fast. Shout out to the Montclair Library again for still letting us show up and say the most vulgar shit they have ever heard in their lives. We are out here saying just wild stuff, and they still keep letting us show up. I don't know why. Another shout out to the 795 Production Company. For always being here and recording our episodes. Very much appreciate that. We're going to get caught up on YouTube, I promise you guys. But we are on all streaming services, Google Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, and SoundCloud. You can always find us. We're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, and we are on YouTube. So please tune in to whichever streaming services you find the most entertaining to watch it on or listen to it on. Episodes come out on Sunday. Videos attempt to come out on Wednesdays. <laughs> We're trying our best here. We're trying to get caught up. We're going to make it happen. With all that being said, let me go ahead and introduce my guest of the day, Lewis. What's up, baby? What's going on, Nelson? <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> We're going to go ahead and get it straight to the nitty gritty. Uh, Lewis, you're gay, right? I am I am a homosexual, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you about the bone I've got to pick with your community. Okay? All right, let, let's pick this bone. It's your gaydars. Wait, uh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> you said let's pick the bone. Let's pick the bone. <laughs> You're all gaydars. Uh-huh. Okay. Here's my issue with the women gaydar. Okay. It's broken. Like, okay. The female gaydar is absolutely broken. As in the and women I, can't find, the, find other women. No. Women just don't know who's gay and who's not. Okay. Okay. So the thing about that is, like, I have lesbian women walk up to me all the time and they'll say, are you gay? And I'll be like, no, I'm not. I, I like women. He's like, really? Like, are you sure? <laughs> yes, bitch. Like, I just told you. I right, <laughs> like right, right, women. Like, what do you mean? And it makes sense, like, to a certain extent because, like, women naturally don't know what they want. Right. So it makes sense, like, women don't know what other people want either. Right, okay. So that's my issue with, the, like, the lesbian community. Mm-hmm. As far as the gay guys, y'all have, like, a flawless gaydar. Y'all know who's gay and who's not. Right. But y'all don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, so, so many guys will walk up to me and be like, oh, I know you're not gay, but, like, I'm still going to hit on you. It's uh, like, all right, well, like, fuck your gay daughter, man. Like, what is it good for? <laughs> it I mean, we don't, we, we, we grow past that. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you go past that. You're willing like, you to look, do what you want. Look past the flaws of it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You, like, you, you never know what could happen, you know. Keep dreams alive. But, I mean... <laughs> Um, Keep dreaming. <laughs> yeah, you never know what might happen. You never know when somebody might get get a little questionable. <laughs> but I mean, just for me, like I know um, a lot of times, like growing up, um, just being around so many straight people at the same time and uh, dealing with straight men. A lot of times, I found being making it more comfortable or making a better situation is making somebody laugh. So if I'm hitting on you and you just die laughing, like. But the, the fact that I'm gay doesn't really matter. So sometimes, like, I hit on everybody, yeah. but just because it's more of a You like can a show joke. who's accepting of it or not. Exactly. Like, I can kind of read out the crowd a lot faster. Never thought of it that way. That's yeah. actually hilarious. Like, <laughs> you, <laughs> hitting on people to find out, like, are you okay with, like, me being gay? <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, it was like, it was, I was the only one for so long. So it was like, okay, so I have to figure out how I'm going to navigate this. Yeah. Well, the best way to do it is to make somebody laugh. And what's funnier than a gay guy hitting on a straight guy? Like, everybody starts, everybody starts dying laughing. There's such a flawless logic to that, but it like makes so much sense. Yeah, this. absolutely. <laughs> and then if they get really pissed and want to fight you, you know, obviously don't fuck with that guy. Like, <laughs> don't fuck with him. He ain't cool. <laughs> I'm, I'm geek. But 
let's go ahead and dive into that. Um, the God damn it, I got to watch what I say around you. Let's go ahead and talk about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We can dive into it. <laughs> uh, the fact that, like, you being a gay black millennial, again, and I repeat this from episode four when I was talking to Afia, where her being a, a, a black female millennial is like, a, or her just being black and female is a, a big three times job because you're already almost at a uh, society disadvantage for just being a woman, and you're at a society disadvantage being black. Right. Now, you being gay, you are at a society disadvantage, no question about it. Like People will always look at you a certain way. Not everybody, but the predominant view will always look at you a certain way. If they didn't, gay marriage be legalized in every state. Yeah, but, absolutely. <laughs> and sure. then on top of that, you are black. So you feel like, do you ever feel like that's a, uh, like you have to try twice as hard? Um, for me, uh, it's, I have to pay attention to what's going on around me and what, and sometimes you can use it to your benefit. Sometimes you can use it and it's a negative thing because a lot of times like me being black and me being gay, like it's almost like the gayness negates the black. So like, it's like all of a sudden I'm cool now. <laughs> no, I'm cool. No, I mean, I, I know it sounds really crazy. I know it sounds really crazy, but it's like, I've noticed a lot of times, a lot of good things happen to me just because I am gay. Like mm -hmm. a lot of times, like people are a little nicer to me or people don't really, they uh, kind of, maybe I just come off less threatening. They don't want to hurt your feelings. Right, right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's like this whole PC culture thing. And just growing up, like I was wait able- Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're telling me the gay community is taking advantage of the PC? <laughs> I mean, no, <laughs> PC I don't say, I'm not saying the whole today. gay community because everybody has their own- But you their, specifically, you're taking me advantage specifically, of it? Me specifically, yeah. You, you best believe I'm gonna just throw it Hey, yes, mama. Like all of this. Like if that's what you need to like be cool, like that's what you need. And I mean, it's um, functioning towards society. It's like I don't forget that I'm black. I know I'm black. Like I, I'm set, I'm down there doing the soul chain line with everybody else. Like <laughs> Cupid but, shuffle. <laughs> yeah. But it's just like you know, um, growing up in this area, especially like your reputation matters everything. And it's just like sometimes you have to present yourself in a certain way to be accepted. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes I could like just go off and be extra gay, and it's like all of a sudden everybody's <laughs> just really nice to me for some reason. <laughs> And it's like, not everybody can do it. Uh, and like, no, and I mean, it sounds nuts, but like, um, jobs, certain opportunities, everything like that. Like, I know a lot of people in a lot of situations, I get out of trouble. Like, I get yeah. certain special treatment just because you're not really threatened by, you're not threatened by a gay man. Nah, like, fuck that. I've seen some gay people I mean, of course. People of up. course. Like, of course we can fuck people up, but I mean... <laughs> Generally, me per se, me and my own experience, yeah. I know that people don't find me threatening. I'm five foot two and I weigh like 105 wet. Like, <laughs> what am I really gonna do to you? Um, but like, have you ever felt like any struggles like growing up, like having to basically be yourself, like just walking out and like, say like through high school, like in the millennial age, we did like have a giant. That was a big point for the gay community because that's where we progressively became a lot more accepting of the gay community. Right. During that, the, 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 the millennial run. So like, what kind of struggles have you dealt with? Like just having to come out and be yourself. Um, I know when I came Don't out, tell me like the, about the threats to your life. I don't want to <laughs> the threats to my life. Right. Like everybody's trying to kill me. <laughs> um, uh, but basically like uh, I came out in seventh grade and it was kind of cool because like you had the um, different shows like Willow Grace and like Noah's Ark, like different things that were coming out, RuPaul's Drag Race mm -hmm. that were coming out during my time where like, more people were seeing it on TV. And I feel like that's the difference between like me and somebody that may have came up before Let me, me. segue off that for yeah. a second. Uh, for you talking about like coming out gay on TV, that is the craziest shit to me because like uh, when we were early on, like when we were younger and stuff like that, if you came out gay on a TV special, it was like a big episode. Like it was yeah. the 100th episode anniversary or something like that. It was the one episode I left in a cliffhanger. It was a it was a ginormous big episode just because one person came out gay. Now, like you could start the season off with like the person being gay and be like, all right, well, he's a regular character in today's society. Like, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing because you got to remember like all those uh, first big episodes, like that's when I was growing up. That's when I was in high school. Like yeah. you had certain people coming out like and it'd be a big deal where now like they're just, it's just like a part of the main story and uh, different things like that. And I mean, it made it easier for me because I felt like uh, it was, since other people were seeing it a lot more on TV and a lot more and everything like that. When I came out, it was a little rough at first. Like yeah. there were certain groups of people that didn't talk to me. Certain like I went through a whole like 
a emo gothic stage and like I just like listen to sad music and like cry in my room. <laughs> like there, it was bad for a second, but then all of a sudden it just turned around. Like I started cheerleading and like I think just with more representation coming out in media, yeah, coming out in all different places, like you're kind of getting hit in the face with it, and it's like either you're gonna accept it or you're not. Yeah, and oh, it's crazy because like I I could honestly say like early on I would honestly witness people like there'd be that one guy cheerleader and people would be like. I don't know how I feel about that. And now, like, when you look at it, like, if I saw a cheerleader on a, uh, like, a male cheerleader on a team cheerleading squad, I'd be like, ah, more of them. Good for you. Right, like, <laughs> right. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because there's so many, especially when I when I started cheering, I was the only guy on the uh, middle school squad, and then I was the only guy. Uh, we had one or two guys that were no, on the team with me. that's just unheard of. Cheerleading but, uh, in middle school? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and that was me. That was me. And I don't know. Of. I feel like I was so in your face about it that, like, it made it easy for me. <laughs> I was so I mean, right, like I was so in your face that what are you gonna do? Like you couldn't really call me a faggot. You really couldn't do. There's not too much you could do to me that I wouldn't have already said to my, about myself. Like yeah. I was the biggest queen walking through high school. Like, <laughs> at, like, and you weren't gonna you weren't gonna fight me. You weren't gonna fight me. Like I didn't bother you and just coming out. The biggest queen walking through high school. I was baby. <laughs> That's hilarious. I was, and uh, it was crazy because, like, um, since I was so out there, it was uh, since I figured out the gayness so fast, mm -hmm. I could figure out the rest of who I am. Where I noticed that yeah. a lot of my counterparts, like, I came out um, when I was in middle, um, high school. What do, you, what do you mean, figured out the gayness so fast? Like, you mean, like, you were I, accepting like of it? I was accepting okay, of it. Like, right. not like I had to, like, <laughs> figure out. <laughs> like, there was a quiz inside your hand, and yeah, you're still gotta, answering like, the questions. Study it. <laughs> Study it up. But no, just like when you accept yourself so fast, it's just like yeah. um, a big thing that my parents pushed on me was that like that's one part. Mm -hmm. Like where I look at my black history, I had to look at my gay history too. Like know yeah. where we came from, Stonewall, different things like that. Mm -hmm. And um, just with being able to come out like in seventh grade, um, it made it easy for me because I could find out who I was. And it wasn't like I like just went straight for this, oh, I'm just going to be gay, which I noticed a lot of people that came out after me. It's like all they wanted to identify as was gay. But like I could identify as I'm gay, but I'm also uh, track runner. I'm also a cheerleader. I'm also like I could also jump into other groups just because find, I accepted yeah. that part of find myself. other niches. Yeah, just because I just put that you in a that. box of just being gay. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know what's the craziest thing? I think like uh, yeah, when it comes to like the the earliness of which you came out, I feel like that like in our day and age, I feel like that was a really good determining factor for like you being able to find who's trustworthy or not. Like who was a good friend. Genuinely, because like you could find out who is was accepting of you and who was welcoming of you and you like they could look past those things because some people in today's society would call it a flaw or like when you were younger, it's a little bit like I said, it's more accepting now. But when you were younger, people will look at it like, oh, well, that's a, a character flaw. Right. That he's gay and stuff like that. But I felt like you were able to determine who were your real friends, because the ones that were actually stuck around when the shit hit the fan, they would be there for you even though you were gay. Like, there's some people that probably went to high school and they were like, oh, well, he's gay, but he's popular, so, like, let me hang out with him. Like, right, right. And <laughs> he you can, can introduce me to the other girls, but then, like, when, like I said, when the shit hit the fan, you were able to figure out, like, oh, these are my friends because they're here for me, even though I'm gay, and they have nothing to gain from that or anything like that. No, yeah, absolutely, because, I mean, being popular, I was pretty pop, uh, in high school, I was pretty popular, and um, I would Talk notice. your shit, Sway. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I mean, but, um, <laughs> no, I was pretty popular. So, like, I noticed when people wanted to just come over to my house, I would have parties all the time. So, mm -hmm. like, people would just wanted to come because I knew I knew where to get alcohol. I knew where to get, like, um, weed and different things like Some that. Bitches. And, um, <laughs> like, if they wanted me to just get, get them with other girls, like, things like that. Like, there was a gr good core group of friends that I did have. Yeah. That It was also just because, like, I could be gay. I could be as flamboyant as I wanted to be. Like, I was, um, and... They were always down to just hang out with me. Like they called me, wanted to know where I was at. Like they were always in my group and my circle, just running around. So yeah, it, it, it did make me. Um, I want to say in that aspect, it made me grow up really fast because it made me read people and their intentions. Yeah. And what they really want from me. Or yeah. Th things like that. And you feel like now maybe it's a little different than like when you were growing up. Like say you were going through middle school and high school. Do you feel like there are still people that like want certain things from you just because you're gay or just because you're. <sighs> I can't say the plug because that just comes off really wrong. Um, <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but like, because you're gay, do you feel like like people's motives behind being your friend is a little different now as it was maybe 10 years ago? Um, 
I feel like now, as in 10 years ago, like 10 years ago, like it was all high school and different things like that. Like mm-hmm. now, it, um, with the way that uh, Gen Z culture is coming and like the way PC is, all that stuff, I feel like sometimes like people just want to be your friend just because they want to say, I have the gay friend or like, uh. we're really cool. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, it's like, you know, when like, you you're know when, like white people, TV. <laughs> you know, when like white people are like, well, I have a black friend. Like, it's kind of like the same thing. Like, <laughs> Oh, well, I have this gay friend, and like I'm gonna hook you two gay friends up, and you know we are completely polar opposites. Like, just because we're two gay people doesn't mean that we're gonna hook up. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's just like, but um, yeah, but, but, but it's like, like it's just, like a white person's like, I have a black girlfriend and a, a black guy friend. Like, I think you guys would be perfect for each other. <laughs> right? Like, just because y'all we're could black. be from two different tribes from <laughs> <Right>? Africa, <laughs> and that's how it be. But I mean, I feel like um. Being gay doesn't really affect my relationship just because I feel like everybody goes through like mm-hmm. different relationships with how they interact with different people. And yeah. like uh, I have learned like growing that like for certain friends are for a certain time. And yeah. Certain things are for certain seasons. Like you're not gonna be friends with everybody for forever. Mm-hmm. And um, there are certain people that like oh I, I'll come in your life at one point and come out of your life at exactly. Certain... God damn it! They still gotta watch this shit. But uh... <laughs> come in and come out, baby. <laughs> gay slay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, mama. What up, honey? You know what's funny? You know what's funny about gay slay? It's, it's the foundation for all slang. Yeah. It legitimately is. Yeah. Like, gay slang is like, it'll start in the gay community. And it'll go over to, like, the female community. And it'll maneuver its way into the male community. But, like, it just works in sessions where, like, it's just got a different twang on it. But technically, I guess it got a little twang out of it. Twang like, <laughs> out of it, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but no, like, and that's the thing because like growing up, um, like I don't really know how it would happen, but I had these three, um, three or four best friends that I used to cheer with that we would cheer outside of school, and like we would go to clubs, like we would hang out at my house, um, party and stuff like that, and it, we would just come up with some of the craziest thing, like, like, um, girl, you know, you need to go down to the grocery store and get your shit together, girl. I don't know what's going on. Like living your best life came from us, like, and it's like. <laughs> We we start we start with these things just because like when we're talking and kiki and, and like you know what a kiki is right you know what a kiki is right <laughs> a kiki basically is when we're all together cackling and like gossiping and talking to each other and things like that but you come up with these things just because like you're you're friends and like um, uh, I know gay people tend to be really big in the pop culture and like yeah. everything's funny and it's just like meme culture and all that stuff like mm-hmm. you see something and it just snaps it just like um, you remember the video where it was like he got money, where like the girl was just running around like <laughs> yeah. he got like we ran around and we were like oh he got money, <laughs> or like um you know have you ever seen bridesmaids? Yes. Um, I you remember, remember the, part? the shitting in the sink. Yes. Thing. You remember what like like uh, I think her name is Maya Rudolph. She's like walking in the street and she's like it's she happening, stops, it's right? happening, and like I I worked at this place. <laughs> I went to this place where um, it was. She was in a wedding gown. <laughs> in the she middle of the street. The <laughs> and she's like, it's happening, it's happening. So, like, I worked at this place um, where it was predominantly gay people just working there. Mm-hmm. And, like, whenever uh, it was a restaurant, so, like, whenever we get busy and, like, she starts at the fan, it's like, it's happening, <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> But, like, you just come up with funny stuff like that that just sticks, you know? Yeah. And, uh, no, that's crazy that you, like, <laughs> you basically say, like, gay people start meme culture. <laughs> I mean, literally, like, we're the funniest people out there. <laughs> I'm geek. I'm so geek. That's a, yeah, no, I hate the, the like, you guys run slang. <laughs> yeah. And it's hilarious, and it makes sense. Because it's like, you know, like when your parents say like, uh, oh, everything you said, we said before and stuff like that. And it's like, gays can literally walk up to everybody. Like, yep. you can walk up to a hood nigga and be like, bro, I've been saying that. Like, right. Like, it's, but, like you, you, you way behind, baby. That was three years ago. <laughs> Where you been? <laughs> Where you been? That was three years ago, boo. Yeah. All fucking bad. <laughs> Running this shit. I ain't mad at you. Live on, sis. <laughs> <laughs> but um, come back to the like the the gay community and almost a perspective. Interracial gay relationships. How do you feel about that? Or not? How do you feel about that? How do you think that's viewed in the gay community? Because I feel like when um, sometimes it's frowned upon within the gay community if there's an interracial relationship, and that's just my perspective. Like when I see the interaction and, like, the, the sideline talk and the background talk and stuff like that. Right. Well, um, I don't want any hate off of this podcast <laughs> after I say this, 
But I mean, um, just in my own personal experience, I've uh, worked in gay clubs, I've worked in gay establishments and different things like that. I've been around a lot of gay people, a lot of parties and different things like that. And uh, there is a big racial divide. Mm -hmm. Like when you have to have gay pride and then you have to have like black gay pride, like obviously that's a big problem. Like, and, um, no, it's fine. I can relate because there's like a white podcast and black podcast, and right. I have to find my niche. Like, <laughs> right. so I, can like, I can't just be a part of the podcast family. Right. I gotta like, be a part of the black podcast family. So I, I get it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like it's human instinct to like kind of look at each other and like kind of gauge and like, um, find, find the differences and things like that. I mean, me personally, I've been in multiple, um, interracial uh, relationships. I've been with yeah. different people and like, I don't know, I feel like you get a different perspective when you meet somebody from a different background yeah. than you. But I just noticed, uh, predominantly like, um, yeah, like there's a no fat, no femme, no blacks, no Asians, like, and like when you go on Grinder and it's like, you're reading this and it's like, <laughs> how am I supposed grinder. to feel? <laughs> I'm how, am I, how am I supposed to feel if like this guy that I find attractive, like, it's just saying, like, oh, no fats, no femmes. Like, obviously, no, I come up a little femme. No blacks, no Asians. Like, what is that? Like, the same you're shit basically being racist. Tinder. You're being racist. Like, <laughs> and, I mean, yeah, you can have your preferences or anything, but, like, can you keep your preferences to yourself? Like, yeah. Like, it's just so out there, like, outwardly racist. And, I mean, I don't know. I've always been a person that could blend in between groups and different people. Mm -hmm. So, like, it never really affected me. But I just see how, like, um, things could be a lot better if we all came together as one entity. Like, because, I mean, not, not even, like, the black and white thing. Like, when you get the gay and trans or, like, the gay and lesbian, like, everybody feels like they're kind of, like, fighting each other. Yeah. When we're all pretty much, when, I, I don't know, for me. <laughs> like, for me, like, when I talk to a straight person, when I talk to a straight person and they're talking about anything that um, deals with the LGBT community, we're all one thing. Yeah. No matter how different we all Which look at really each other. Which is really not even the case, it's, but, yeah, I'm tracking. <laughs> but it's, like, literally, when I'm talking to a straight person, like, I don't know how they're gauging and, like, what their experiences have been. Yeah. Because, I mean, I noticed that, like, gay, uh, straight people normally tend to be better around gay people once they've had their own interactions yeah. or had their own experiences, and that's what they base it off of. Mm -hmm. No, you're not wrong. It's <laughs> <laughs> not completely. But I, I can understand why, like, the flamboyantly gay white guys act like ratchet black girls. <laughs> like, that's, that's a thing. I mean, I'm who like, doesn't want to be Cardi B and Nicki Minaj? Yo, like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> they are all sassy and they love Lizzo. <laughs> 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 oh, you ain't lying. You, you ain't lying. They're out here singing "Truth Hurts" and hair toss. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, I mean, for real, for real. Like between me and you, who doesn't want to be black? <laughs> like, who doesn't want to be black? You're right. Yeah. It's not wrong. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, you know, you, you like. There no, are black is go-to race as far as being cool. You but I mean, cool a lot of us. Um, I, I would think that would stem from, and I don't know. I'm not a doctor or a therapist or anything, but I would just think that, like me growing up, like yeah, but I we always, dumbass millennials here talking about our dumbass perspective. So you right. go ahead, uh, yeah, <laughs> speak like, your truth. Um, uh, I feel like when I when I I knew I was different when I was like five. Yeah, and throughout the, all that time, I hung out with girls. And if you're like white guy was hanging out with girls too, like girls, um, I noticed. I never really saw the color, like, and I feel like that's the difference between mm -hmm. the millennials. Like, we don't see color until we get out of school and like have to do with the real world and Actually, realize yeah. it's a real thing. I agree, one hundred percent. Because like, I didn't see it until I'll, I got slapped in the face and couldn't get jobs and couldn't do things like yeah. outside of school. But when I was in school, it was like so cohesive and things like that. Your teacher wasn't treating you like the black kid in class, right? Exactly. Unless you were the black kid in class. <laughs> <laughs> but I was the gay black kid, honey. I was the queen. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, if like we're all hanging out, like if I hung out with girls, like a lot of my things, like I remember doing like a um a show with my sister and some of the neighborhood girls doing Beyonce, uh, no no no, like and we was getting it, like and that's but that was what I grew up with, and I mean if a gay white kids are hanging out with whoever that you grow up around, I think it's where that comes from, yeah. and I mean a lot of us are like uh, growing up, like you know the male energy, it's kind of hard to like navigate that at first when you're first coming out, um, especially back in the day. Now it's a, little, a lot easier because you never know what somebody's doing. Yeah. But um, I feel like when you hang out with girls like that, it just naturally gets into you. And then, like, when we go to the club, like, we just, it's just, uh, it's nice. It just Turn comes out. It just comes out. Like, I don't know. Oh, man. I'm, I'm fucking geek. <laughs> here's, a, here's a funny thing that I got to ask. What's questions? Like, me being black, and I'm pretty sure you've experienced this, too. There are certain questions that people will ask you just because you're black. Like, 
are you from Wakanda or not? But like, <laughs> <laughs> Wakanda, <laughs> you being gay, what are questions people feel inclined to, like, feel inclined to ask you just because you're gay? Um, how do I know? Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you how do you know you're gay? I mean, I don't know. I put dick in my ass. Like, uh, like I, I, I don't Wait. know what else to tell you. <laughs> like, I don't know what else to tell you. Like, they don't um, ever ask you like what trajectory do your arrows point? Oh yeah. They, oh, they want to know. They want to know like, oh, do you top? Are you bottom? Are you the pitcher or the catcher? Like, are you the man or the woman? And I'm like, last I checked, I still had a dick, so I think I'm a man. <laughs> So, I mean, uh, I don't really know how to answer well, that how question. How does it feel to have your back blown up? <laughs> right? Like, well, I guess. I mean, if you want to know. No. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the questions people ask. But, um, like- <laughs> but yeah, they asked if I've ever been with a woman. Um, they asked, like, uh, when did I know? Um, they asked, uh, I don't know. How did my parents take it? <laughs> like, how was that? Like, how what, they always ask about your coming out story. Yeah. Which mine was hilarious. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Dive in it. All right. <laughs> so picture this. I'm coming home, and um, I'm on a family trip with my dad. My mom and dad are separated. And uh, we, it was back in the day when you have one computer in the house, and, like, everybody had to share the computer. And you I, don't, don't, I don't remember what that Pop-ups are like. a bitch. <laughs> Pop-ups are a goddamn bitch. <laughs> So, I mean, back in the day, like, you know, we used to use the AOL chats and different things like that. Yeah, and, I, I remember uh, those days. And um, One computer I, was, now. I, was getting, I was getting real <laughs> curious, and I looked up some videos to quench my knowledge. To, like, get some more knowledge about, like, some cer- certain things. So, I looked these videos up, and I closed down the computer, I thought. But apparently, the pop-ups just showed up while I was on this trip. So I come home. Hey, honey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. It was more like, Lois, <laughs> get your ass downstairs. <laughs> so I run downstairs. I'm like, what's going on, mama? And um, she's like, what is this? And I was like, uh, educational knowledge. Did you say it like that? No. I just <laughs> <laughs> she would have already known if you said it like that. <laughs> No, I, 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 was like, I was like, it's, uh, I was like, it's point. She's like, so are you gay? And I looked at her and I like, I, I felt my like chose, uh, chest go down to my throat and I'm like, um, yes. And that was when I, like, I told my mom, like, it was like, fuck it. Okay, mm-hmm. not mom knows who, who gives a fuck. Um, and then my dad heard it. So I had to run upstairs and he's like, what's your mom yelling at you about? And I was like, um, he said what? He, he was like, what's your mom yelling at you about? Oh, okay. He was upstairs. And um, I was like, oh, she found some stuff on the computer. And he was like, what kind of stuff? And I was like, Gay stuff. So then he had like a thirty minute cry. I ran upstairs. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, I don't know what to do in this moment right For now. For both eyes, or was it like the Denzel watching? It was like the Denzel. It was like the the whole Denzel. <laughs> like, uh, thirty minutes. Yeah, like I don't know. I don't really know what happened because once he started crying, I ran upstairs, and then he called me downstairs. <laughs> then he called me downstairs. <laughs> And I'm like, oh my god! Now everybody knows I'm gay. Like they found porn on the computer. Like, what am I supposed to do? They're telling all my friends right now. Right, like, <laughs> like, I don't know what to do. No, because um, it wasn't after seven yet. And you oh, know, back then okay. you have to get after. No, it was after nine when you got the free uh, calls. I okay. called them after nine. Okay. Um, but um, <laughs> <laughs> unlimited nights and weekends. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Um, but uh, then he called me downstairs after thirty minutes, and like we had a like long conversation about it, and um, never spoke on it again. Left it alone. But now we're cool, like, years later. You know, because, like, when you come out, you have to realize that, like, it's not just you coming out. Like, mm-hmm. I had a younger sister and an older brother that were in school with me, too. Like, they had to come out with me, and, like, yeah. that's a thing for them. Like, wait, wait, like, wait, 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 wait. Like, they were gay, too? Or, like, no, they like, were just, you're basically saying, like, they had to say, oh, yes, my brother's gay. Yes, because, okay. like, where people wouldn't make fun of me or wouldn't say it to me, they yeah. would go to them. And especially because my sister was in the same grade, like there was multiple times that I heard that she, like people, like she got in fights behind it, like. Mm-hmm. And uh, shout out to your sister, then. Yeah, like yeah, <laughs> Shannon, Shannon was what's up because she was like my little guardian angel, um, because like people wouldn't say it to me, they would say it to her, but um, yeah. So my dad had his little time. Like once I came twenty three, we like started talking about it a lot more and things like that. And my mom's always been cool. Like as soon as I told her, she was like, "I don't know what to do with you," so she just took me to Gay Pride and was like, "Go." <laughs> She's like, "Just go, go figure it out." <laughs> and I went to every gay pride after that. It was awesome. It was she good. was really cool about it. And that is a, a really good thing to see in today's society. That like, because I think that's the biggest problem is like 
you know, I don't care who you are, how close you are to your parents. It's a big issue with like disappointing your parents. Yeah. And that's why my parents don't watch Saracens and Wolves podcast. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to disappoint them. You don't need to say that's why. <laughs> but, uh, except my dad, he's a true king. But, uh, <laughs> but no, like, I, I, I think that's like a, a big issue with like, having to come out as gay and then you worry about how your parents are going to look at you because you never know how they're going to take it. And you're sitting here like, are my parents going to be accepting of who I really am or are they going to like banish me from life? Right. Like that's the one thing I can uh, uh, appreciate. That's why I'm so cool with a lot of the gay people that I'm cool with because me personally, especially using this podcast as an example, I'm all about come here and be yourself. I'm all about embrace who you are, how you feel, what your thoughts are, what your opinions are, and stuff like that. And who does that better than gay people? I tell you. Like, <laughs> they'll definitely let you know how, who let you know how they feel. Who is more about embracing themselves? <laughs> I mean, you, you have some people that, you know, they fight it within themselves and stuff like that. And there's reasons for that. Or not reasons, but there's a foundation for that. Like how you've been brought up, the people you've hung around, how your parents feel and stuff like that. But when a gay person can openly say, I am gay and I'm completely fine with it and I love who I am and stuff like that. What more can you ask from right. a regular person? No, absolutely. Because, I mean, I've dealt with uh, all over the spectrum, like DL guys, like the whole undercover culture and things like that. And it's like um, I never try and put anybody, that pressure on anybody to say what they are because, I mean, it's a spectrum. Like people are bisexual and like mm-hmm. that's something that people look down on. And uh, it, a lot of people tell you that you're one or the other and things yeah. like that. But um, you just never know where somebody comes from because, I mean, I've dated people that, like, they're religious, real religious in the background. Like, um, their family God forbid them. you're a, a religious person and gay. Right. Like, <laughs> like that's a whole other box of worms you got to figure Literally, God forbid. Like, <laughs> right. No, because I, I, I remember when I came out and um, I came out and we would go to church all the time. And I stopped going to church when I was 16. Because, mm-hmm. like, all the kids came, uh, they, they, we all started going to the same high school. I was out, and I was flaming. Which is crazy, because I feel like the pastors were coming out before anybody else. I mean, <laughs> not, not this one. Not not this one. <laughs> not, 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 not Mr. Uh, mm-mm. <laughs> not Mr. RCC. Mm-mm. He was not about it. And, I mean, it wasn't even that, like, I felt like I was pushed out of the church. It was just like, mm-hmm. you know, you get stared at. You get looked at. You, it's yeah. a little different. And this is the one place I shouldn't feel like that. Exactly. And that's too. the one thing that I've always felt, like, with church, um, I never really had a problem. I know that, like, uh, the differences between, like, being gay and going to church and things like that. Mm-hmm. But um, from the core part, for, like, since I was going as a kid, it was um, – you're supposed to take the hoe off the street. You're supposed to take the bomb. You're supposed to take everybody. And, like, you're supposed to, it's all Welcome them love. in. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, once I stopped feeling that, that's when I had to go. Yeah. No, I understand that completely. Um, speaking of the bisexualness, now here's my thought mm-hmm. that every woman on the planet is bisexual. I honestly think that. Okay. And I think that because every girl wants to know what it feels like to kiss another girl. You, you, can't you don't think men? You don't think men do the same thing? Hell no! No, no. <laughs> you know that that gator? I don't give a shit about. Like, <laughs> not I mean, I mean, I don't know. It looks like you're thinking about it. it looks like you're thinking about not. it. As if not. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like I feel like, uh, like you can't. Like girls do that all the time. They're like, I, I want to kiss that guy. She's so fine and stuff like that. No guy says, oh, that guy looks good. I would kiss him. No guy says that in a group of his male friends. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I hate to like, it, I hate to like put it that way, but I think that every human, like, I don't think you're wrong when you say that every girl is bisexual. I think every man is some level of gay, and it just depends on who. Like, and I know this sounds nuts, but like, it, 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 like I have just been with, I've been with too many different types of guys. I've been with too many guys that like now have married and have kids. Like, mm-hmm. and I just feel like everybody goes through a phase or like finds that one person like that they uh, get kind of physically attracted to. And it's like a little weird whether they act on it or not or whether they'll say it is one thing, but I think everybody thinks about it. No, I'm talking about like not, not just being physically attracted to. But like mentally, especially like as, as a friend, like um, there have been girlfriends that have had that. Well, like, that's what guy I felt friends like I was are. To... Like if uh, like we're cool, we can connect on a mental level. That's why we're sitting here having this episode. Right. But like that doesn't mean like I, I'd be like, oh, Lewis is cute. I would kiss him. Like, that's not what goes through my head. But, I mean, like, you never know, because, you know, like, it's like, uh, it's like, you know, when you work with somebody, like, when you, like, no, 
I'm trying to prove a point. <laughs> my when work, you, I mean. No, like when you work when you work with somebody and you like, because I had a situation where like I was best friends with somebody and we spent a lot of time together and it yeah. was just a lot of time spent together and then all of a sudden something happened. Yeah. And it was like, like we most work on relationships it. go. Yeah, but I mean, you, you're saying that couldn't happen with a dude. We could like again my perspective, but happen, like, we but could, I think like, it could catch happen. a drink on the, the and I, and like, and Monday and night that football. Like, that, <laughs> no, that drink, that drink turns into three, turns into five. All of a sudden, no. <laughs> next thing you know, you're waking five up in a hotel salad. room cuddled. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like it happens all the time. I don't know why this is shocking. It happens all the time. <laughs> I mean, to me anyway. I've always. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Oh, I'm like God. a hot chocolate. I'll keep you warm. <laughs> I hate everything about you. <laughs> uh, last thing I want to touch on, um, for sure, is we definitely got to talk about this. You still eat Chick Fil A? Do I still eat Chick Fil A? I do not eat Chick Fil A. Like you've never eaten Chick Fil A, or you were? I've them? I've had Chick Fil A sandwiches before, but once the whole thing came out with like the whole. Um, uh, what's it called? Funding anti-gay um, mm-hmm. rhetoric and different things like that, um, and conversion camps and things like that. Because I never had to go through conversions or anything like that, and um, I would feel bad for anybody that does put, get through that. So I really can't support a company that's gonna like uh, push that onto other people. Because it's just like you know, you're born who you are. You can't really tell me. Yeah, what, like you can't put money towards some like against people. How do you feel about like the way businesses feel about that? Like, uh, like how often is that like a huge contributor, and, like hiring factor? Come here, little guy. Give um, me some love. I don't really know. I'm, I'm doing a podcast, and you know. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, man? Really negative things. You gonna say something to the camera? No. Okay, well get out, cause your dad's discussing right now, so you can't be over here. <laughs> Okay, see, that's why you're not allowed to talk. <laughs> but go ahead, as far as the businesses being involved. Um, yeah, I mean, as for work, like, I work in customer service. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, gay people, especially me, like, I'm very outspoken and uh, very friendly. And, like... Um, flamboyant. Flamboyant. I mean, like, when you look at old TVs, like, how many gay butlers were there, you know? Like, uh, it's kind of like our thing. Wait. <laughs> service is kind of like our thing. I never realized that till now. I'm telling you, right? Right? We're everywhere, like, like uh, we we're serving. everywhere. We're everywhere. <laughs> I never thought about that until just now, God. But um, I feel like <laughs> it gives you a certain type of, and you like pay attention to detail. Like it's like we're mm-hmm. like we're like super women because like we think like men and we're like women. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, have you ever seen a gay wedding? Mm, Immacu- not in person. Immaculate. You need to go to one. Mm-hmm. Any good planned wedding is immaculate. But, but let a gay man do it. <laughs> You'll have doves and swans and waterfalls and ice sculptures. But as far as like you getting like hired for job positions, how um, much is that a contributor to? Uh, it, uh, I think it helps. I think um, what? I think yeah. I mean honestly, like uh, it's a whole. There's a certain type of um, essence that comes out of me mm-hmm. and I feel like it comes from that gay side of me like where I'm just out there and like happy and like a lot of people read that when I'm getting hired but I mean I'm not going for like your corporate business jobs or I'm not going for like construction yeah like I wouldn't know how it affects people in that way because that's a totally whole different thing like you, yeah. you see a gay man at a front desk you see a gay man at a host stand or anything like that like yeah something that thing. requires you to involve with which is crazy now that you uh, point that out because god the butlers are always gay that's crazy <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey from Fresh Prince of Bel Air, were you gay too? Uh, I mean, I'm look at him. <laughs> look at him. I got questions. <laughs> <laughs> but no, when you think about like, uh, it's funny though because like you guys have such a certain perception that is viewed about you. But then like you always end up in like positions that require you to talk to the most people. Yeah. This is legitimately the craziest things. It's like, oh yes, gay people can be the most welcoming and the most talkative people ever. Kid, if you don't be quiet, I'm gonna kick you out of here myself. Mm-hmm. Um, you can be <laughs> uh you guys are like the you're always in the front lines for like welcoming. Like you said, yeah. you can be host, you can be flight attendant you could be exactly uh the front counter person whatever have you because i always really organized like i didn't get this because my room's a freaking mess 
but um, like they're normally really organized, always clean, kept. Uh, maybe that's why people think you're gay because you always keep your lined up, shit lined up, and everything's all good, you know. <laughs> no, most straight men are a little messy. <laughs> that <it> works. <laughs> I had no idea. That is completely new news to me. But anyways, um, you got anything else before we get out of here? Um, no. Nah. Uh, I just hope that I uh, gave a good perspective on mm-hmm. um, my gay experience and things like that. And yeah. uh, I just hope that everybody goes out there and just be who, who they're supposed to be. Be who they want to be. Yeah. So, I mean, at the end of the day, you're just going to be in the ground if you don't. Good positive note to leave out on. And sorry for everybody that we're cutting the episode short. We're running a little late. So we'll go ahead and finish out on that. And to everybody that is a millennial, everything you say is a sin and no one wants to hear your woes. And to everybody else, it's been another episode of the Addison's Woes podcast. Peace.